So glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us. If you're not joining us live and you're seeing us Tuesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or however it may be, welcome. We're so glad that you're taking the time out to join us. Um, look, so we're in this sermon series on the things of God being spoken. And I'm here to tell you, to remind you once again this week that what God said is true. We live in a culture where everything's a lie. Can I get a witness in the house? Everything, it seems, in our culture is a lie. Now listen, I browbeated everybody last week. Politicians, it didn't matter. I wore them all out because I don't trust none of them. Just my own personal observation, you see. But I, I, don't, I don't trust the news media. I don't trust big tech. I don't trust big pharma. I, I just don't trust any of those people because I know they have agendas. Their agenda is money. They want to get your money and put it in their pocket. You hear me? And so I, I, when money gets involved in things, I get highly suspicious. And like I said, the old firm, that movie, from the firm, that, that movie called The Firm, and that little line that's in there says, I get paid to be suspicious when I got nothing to be suspicious about. It's just my nature. But I have seen over the years that the one thing that you can count on, when you can't count on any more of the institutions in our culture, one thing you can count on is Jesus. He is true. Can I get a witness? He's true. There's no lie found in him at all. And today we're going to continue that sermon series on the truth being spoken. And I want to share something with you. Because those of us who belong to Pentecostal theology and charismatic theology, we have this understanding and we just think about it. God, you've said it and it is true. But how many of you know this morning that you may not get to see that truth? Do you know that God will speak something into you, but it might be for somebody else in a different generation? Let me say that again. God may be speaking something to you. Your eyes will never see it. You go back and you look at the Old Testament and all the promises that God made to those patriarchs in the Old Testament. They never got to see it come to pass. Daryl, they never saw it. They had belief in their heart that it was going to happen, but they never saw it. And it was coming and it always came to pass, but sometimes it would come to pass. Check this out now. This is going to blow your theological mind. Sometimes it would come to pass hundreds, that's plural, hundreds of, of years later. So just because God's promised me something, and I believe that the Lord has promised me something. Like for example, I believe that I'm the I'm the first male in my family to believe God. Now I'm not gonna be the last. I'm setting up a spiritual heritage for my children, and I'm believing that, and I'm believing that for my grandchildren too. Now, I'm believing that my children and my grandchildren are going to serve the Lord. Now, I may not see my grandchildren because I had my children late in life. I may not see them grow. God may have mercy on me. Let me live to be 100. I expect to live to be 100. But if I don't, and I don't get to see my grandchildren, I'm going to believe God because He's spoken into me that He started a new thing with me. And then my children and my grandchildren are going to serve the Lord. I may not get to see it, but I have the promises in my heart that it's going to come to pass. God will always give you promises. And if he's given you a promise, he'll live by it. Now, when I look back and discover these Old Testament prophecies concerning the things of Jesus, they believed God for it. They didn't get to see it, but it was true and it rang true, and it came to pass. Last week I shared some of those things with you, and I'm going to share another set of circumstances and prophecies with you this week. Now listen, this one's a little bit more tricky. And it's going to take me some explaining to do, so I want you to stay with me now. But how many of you know in the Old Testament, God wanted to find somebody that He could bless, some nation that He could bless? And the Old Testament tells us that God looked over the whole earth at all the people of the earth, and he found one group of people and said, I want to bless that group of people. How do you know who that group of people is? Come on, scream it out. Israel, that's exactly right. Now listen, I know in our culture that Israel 
has become something that you don't celebrate. Israel's company is something that you don't really talk about. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible is clear. If our nation is going to make it, we need to bless Israel. That's the God's honest truth. And if we turn our back on them, I'm telling you, God has made a covenant with those people. And listen to me, I don't know if y'all fully understand what a covenant is. Because in our culture nowadays, we don't tell, we, we talked about it last Wednesday night, nobody wants to tell the truth no more. One of the brothers in the church asked, so what happened to a good old handshake? Used to be you can make a handshake. How many of you remember that? There used to be a day in America where you could shake somebody's hand and you knew they were going to make it happen. How many of you know you can't trust that no more because the devil's a liar? You can't trust a man's handshake no more. That's a shame. Nowadays, you've got to go get a piece of paper and write it down. Both of you's got to sign it. You've got to enter into a contractual agreement. And even sometimes that don't even help because they'll take you to court over it sometimes. And it won't even be proven true in a court of law. Not so with God. When God makes a covenant with you, He makes it with Himself. You hear me? That's the difference. When God makes a covenant with His people, He just doesn't make it to the people. He makes it with Himself. And when God makes a covenant or an agreement with Himself, let me tell you something, He's going to abide by that. It ain't like us. He's not fickle. One day feels one way and the next day feels another. No, sir, and no, ma'am. When God makes a promise with himself, he lives up to it. That's why the Old Testament saints knew how to dial into something that you and I don't know how to dial into. The Old Testament saints of God knew how to get a hold of God and say, God, you promised. Have you ever remember reading that in the Old Testament? You said this was going to happen. God, are you going to prove yourself to be a liar to the whole world? God, come on now. Show up and show yourself mighty and strong and true. Come to our rescue and do a good deed for us. And they would call on God and they'd hold God to his word. How many you know it's okay to do that? God wants you to do that. God wants you to hold him to his word. Because I'm here to tell you, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will stay true. So the Lord don't mind you holding his feet to the fire over the promises that he's made to you. You go on and do it. He won't get mad at you. He loves it when you do it. Because that means that you're showing faith in him that he'll do what he says he'll do. And He told these people a long time ago, he says, I'm going to live up to you. And he says, I'm going to make my covenant with you. And I'll always be your God. And that's what he says here in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, most of us know that scripture verse. What in the world was going on in the time of Isaiah for, for the prophet Isaiah to prophesy such a thing? I'll tell you what was happening. That nation, Israel, that God had made a promise to, that through them the whole world would be blessed, was coming under attack. Listen to me. Not spiritual attack. Military attack. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, all of them were coming down, and they were starting to attack the country of Israel. And the country of Israel was beginning to grow faint in heart. And they started turning to God and they said, God, now you told us, you promised us that you would always be with us and that you'd never forsake us, that you'd never turn your back on us. And look, we got enemies all around us and they're attacking us and if you don't come to our rescue, we're doomed. And they would cry out to God. And God says, well, you got to understand, I got a plan. I tried to tell you to live right and you wouldn't do it. I tried to tell you to keep your nose clean and you wouldn't. I sent prophets to you that told you to tighten up and you wouldn't do it. So now I've got to get a, I've got a plan. I'm going to send these armies and they're going to come and they're going to crush you. Now think about that. I'm going to send these armies, they're going to crush you. But out of that, out of those ashes... Beauty's coming. 
Hear me. Out of those ashes, beauty's coming. I'll tell you what. I feel led to tell you this. Go back to that scripture verse. I got connections up here. I'll, I'll change them up here when I need them. Let me tell you something. America better get her act together. I feel strongly about this warning. This country that we live in was founded upon Christian principles. You hear me? This thing's only going to work if we live by Christian principles. Listen, I feel something inside of me, and I may get off track a little bit, but I want to tell y'all something. We better get our act together. Because the same people that were, this was visited upon, and Isaiah was warning them, said, listen, trouble's coming. And they wouldn't listen. I'm telling you the same thing's happening to America. We better get our act together, because if we don't, trouble's coming. And I watched the news this past week, and we got a bunch of these yahoos. I'm going to look in the camera. Got a bunch of these yahoos up in Washington, D.C., wanting to start trying to trouble with Russia. Let me look, at, look right here. We don't want none of that right now. Let me tell you something. We don't want none of that right now. We're so lost right now, we do not need a war to try to get our attention off of stuff that we don't need to have our attention on. What we need to have our attention on is this country and the things of God. That's what we need to have our attention on. But they're trying to get our attention off this stuff, try to put it on Russia over here, trying to say Russia's about to invade Ukraine, trying to get our attention on that stuff over there. Our attention don't need to be over there right now. You understand, in America right now, and especially in the armed forces, we can't even figure out if men are men and women are women. I guarantee you Russia don't have that problem. I guarantee you China ain't got that problem. And we better wise up. We go over and get ourselves into a mess. These politicians, listen, all they're going to do, they don't mind spending our money and they don't mind sending our children off to war. I see them coming a million miles away. I know the deal. They're trying to get over there and get our mess over there, trying to protect borders over there. Protect ours. Quit worrying about what's going on over there. We got, we got fish to fry here at home. Going over there. I'm telling you what right now. They'll clean our clock. Because we ain't ready for that. We lost as a goose right now. Because I'm telling you, those men over there are men. They ain't none of them over there worried about being called men. They ain't none of them worried about calling them, call them, call them whatever you want, male chauvinist or whatever. They'll put you in a bind in about five seconds. America better get her act together. We better be turning back to the Lord. Get our act together. Start repenting. Start living right, doing right. Because the same warning that was here is on us. And the same thing's happening to us in our minds as happened to them back then. Back then, they were saying, there ain't no way God's going to send the Babylonians and the Assyrians and whoever else down here to beat us. We're God's chosen people. <laughs> don't be fooled. God is God. You don't trifle with a holy God. And the same thing rings true for us today. We were founded upon biblical principles. Yes, we were. But if we don't live by them, then we're bound to repeat history. And I don't know about you, but I want my children and grandchildren raised up in a place better than what I got right now. And we better start in the house. Ain't none of this on my notes. Ladies and gentlemen, viewing, I'm sorry. Ain't none of this in my notes, but you're going to get it anyway. i got to calm down. I'm working a sweat up up here. But let me tell you something. This stuff starts in the house. So daddies, start being men. Don't worry that the news media is going to call you whatever. Be a man. Say, well, what's that mean? By God, you know. If you've got to explain what men are anymore, we're in bad shape than I thought we were. Get up, go to work. 
Provide for your family. Raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Love your wife like Christ loved the church. We better start making our family strong again. Or this thing is not going to turn out well. Saw a statistic just this past week that I gave to Kristen. She's in the counseling field, and she counsels children that are in messes who have seen too much and done too much way too early, and it has completely screwed them up. There was a statistic that came across my phone that in America today, only 17.8%, did you hear that? Let me repeat it. Only 17.8% of American homes have the biological daddy and the biological mom and the biological kids in that house. 17.8%. No wonder we're in a mess. Because ain't nobody tending their house. Daddy, start tending your house. And I understand that means about 82% of what we got in America is blended families. I get that. But that don't mean that blended families can't be strong too. And I know it didn't work out the first go or the second go or whatever. You might be on number 10. I don't know what you're on. But here's the thing. It don't matter no more. What you got right now is what you got. Start loving right now. Say, well, there's no more love in our home. Then get yourself in your bedroom. Shut the doors and don't come out until the blossoms bloom in spring. You hear me? When the magnolias just bloom, start blooming in the spring, then come out of your bedroom. Because I got news for you. It's hard to fuss and fight with somebody you just got out of the bed with. Hello. Say, Pastor John, are you recommending that we have sex in our home? Yes, a lot of it. Because <laughs> it's good for what ails you. And it'll keep your family strong. It'll keep the bonds between you and your spouse strong. It'll do what it's God's intended for it to do. Don't be running around, running here and there. God gave you a wife for a reason. God gave you a husband for a reason. Do what you got to do. Be a man, be a woman of God, and live like that, and raise your children in the things of the Lord. Y'all better turn this microphone off. I'm telling you, when I get like this, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but when I get done, ain't, I, listen, everybody's going to be blushing by the time I'm done. Because we don't speak truth no more. And when we hear it, we think, my God, is he allowed to say that? You better believe I'm allowed to say that. We better get it together. In our, I'm telling you, quit worrying about everything else. Turn that TV off, turn that Internet off. And not that because if you watch it, you're going to hell because it's gut rot. Go outside and plant a garden. Hello, get you some chickens. Let's start doing things the right way. It's good for what else you. The Lord God created you to be in nature. Go do that. Live right, do right, be right. And it will turn out right. I'm telling you. Same thing happened just this past week over here at Drone. Some idiot phoned in that bomb threat over here at Drone. Messed all those kids up. My kids called me crying, all upset, worried. Whoever the idiot was, they'll track them down because you can't press send. Young people, listen to me. You can't press send. They'll track it. Don't ever press send unless you know that it's right. But somebody press send over here, and I'm going to tell you why. They'll find out who that little joker is. I got a sneaky suspicion his daddy ain't at the house. It's probably a young boy sitting in his mama's basement in his underwear who ain't got nothing else going on. He thinks he's a big shot. And he don't have a daddy in home that'll take off a belt and wear his butt out. And so now all of a sudden he's 14 years old, 15 years old, and he thinks he's a big shot. I got news for you, son. If you was at my house, I'd wear you out. There's no way you'd call in a bomb threat at my house. I'd half kill you. You understand? 
Everybody says, my God, Pastor John, that sounds like you. You Listen, I'm not talking about abusing them, but I'm going to tell you what. You got kids who will call in a bomb threat and ruin everybody's day and mess everything up. That kid deserves a whipping. Period. And I don't care who likes it. I see how I got on this high horse. But I'm telling you, listen, it ain't hard to do right in this country. But even if we do wrong, we serve a God who's gracious and merciful. Ain't he? And even though this country of Israel, that God surveyed the whole world to try to figure out what was going on and and pick them, and even though they went sideways and didn't live up to it, God still lived up to it. He always lives up. When he makes a covenant, he don't make it with you. He makes it with himself. Because he knows we're going to let him down. In this country of Israel that he surveyed and found them and picked them, they let him down. But praise be to God, he doesn't let us down. And he says, listen, even though you've done things sideways and you've been an idiot, I'm going to come to your rescue. Are you going to have to pay for what you've done? Yes. Are the Babylonians still going to come clean your clock? Yes. Why? Because I told you not to do it and you did it anyway and there's consequences. Imagine living in a country where there was consequences. Imagine living in a family where there was consequences. And he says, just because you've done wrong don't mean I don't love you. But one of these days, I'm going to give you a son. And, he, and the government is going to be on his shoulders. Hey, won't be no wars or rumors of wars then. Come on. God will handle it. Wonderful counselor. How many know we need a counselor right now with some wisdom? Come on. My Lord, we need that. I don't know if them people in Washington, D.C. are a foot of horseback today. But I know what? God's on the throne. And he's a wonderful counselor. And you can turn to him in time of need and he'll give you an answer. Come on. He'll do it. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If we need two things in this world, it's peace and some counsel. You ain't going to find that in people up there in Washington or even in Raleigh or anywhere else when they don't even serve God, worship the Lord, don't even acknowledge who He is. Let me ask you something. How in the world do you plan on getting wisdom when you don't even know the one who is wisdom? How are you going to do that? How are you going to get peace when you don't even know the Prince of Peace? It's impossible. God is where this stuff is at. And until the people of God figure that out, I'll tell you what, we're going to be in a bind. But it went on and on and on. The psalmist found himself in trouble in Psalm 89. He said, and, and God has to repeat this thing to him. That's what I told you when we started this thing. Always lean on God. He doesn't mind if you remind him of what he told you. He says here, I've made a covenant with my chosen, with my, and I have sworn to my servant David. I'm telling you, when God makes a promise, he's going to live by it. And he made a promise to David. Y'all remember King David? Back in the Old Testament, God made a promise to him. And essentially, God made a promise to himself that through David, he would establish a throne that would be here forever and ever. Now, I'm telling you, you go to Israel right now, David's descendant is not on the throne over there. Did you know that? He's not over there. But that's not what God's talking about. God's got a descendant through David. He sits on a throne, all right. It just ain't over in Jerusalem. Yet. But that day's coming. He's made, it a, he's made a promise to himself that through David, he would have a throne established that would always be a wonderful counselor that you could go to and a prince of peace that you could always go to. And I know right now we ain't got it. But if God promised it and it's true, then that means it's still around here somewhere. You just got to find it. Keep it on going. Jeremiah, another prophet, same thing. Found himself in a bind. He said, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord. I'll rise up for David, a righteous branch. Not unrighteous, righteous. 
And he'll reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. I don't see that anywhere, brothers and sisters. Those of you who are watching, I don't see this anywhere. It's got to be somewhere because I'm telling you everything else is a lie, but the Word of God is true. So it's got to be somewhere. Where's that at? <laughs> well, I got news for you. It happened. It happened in the New Testament. All that stuff I told you and we've been going over is in the Old Testament. It's been going over 700 years before Jesus ever showed up. And then lo and behold, in the book of Luke, chapter 2, in the New Testament, we finally see where this prophecy finally comes to pass. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's who God was talking about the entire time. And the people of the Old Testament missed it. They talked about it. They wrote it down. They knew that something was going to happen. But they, they were given these promises. But it took 700 years for it to come to pass. And here we are, 2,000 years, on the other side of another promise that the Lord God himself made when he rose up from the dead and went to heaven. And there were two angels that came alongside there, and they said, Hey, why are you standing here looking up into the sky in amazement? Don't you know that this same Jesus who was sitting in front of you is going to descend in like manner? Listen, the Lord God has made us a promise. This holiday season, I want you to understand something. God is true. And if God said he's coming back, he's coming back. Because the word of God is true, and it's been proven true over and over and over again. And if the Lord talked about there was going to the city of David, there was going to be a Savior born to us, that through him the government would rest on his shoulders and we'll live through that. And it came to pass. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to put my stock in that. I ended last week by telling you this little thing. I'm going to end next week with it too. There was a math mutician, smart fella, real egghead. They got together and said, I wonder of all the prophecies. Now look, last week I gave you one. This week I gave you one. There's over 300 of them that point to Jesus. 300 of them. There's a mathematician who got together and said, Now I wonder, what's the chances of all of these prophecies being to somebody else? And I told you this way last week, and I'm going to tell it to you again. He said, the probability of it being anybody but Jesus is this. Take coins. Go to the state of Texas. Stack the coins in the state of Texas two feet deep all across the state of Texas. I mean, the Texas is big. Coins two feet deep the whole state of Texas. Take one coin and put a red dot on it and throw it out there amongst all those sea, that sea of coins, and then take a man and blindfold him and put him out there and tell him he can go anywhere in the state of Texas he wants to go, north, east, south, or west, and tell him to stoop down at some point and pick up the coin. But on the first try, he's got to pick up that coin with a red dot in it. That's the chances of it being anybody else. I'm here to tell you, that ain't going to happen. Jesus is who he says he is. And I'm hitching my wagon to that. This holiday season, I am firmly focused on the Lord God. I encourage you to do the same. Those of you who are watching, don't take your eyes off the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord God. He will never lead us astray. Amen? Well, we're out of time. Give him praise today in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Well, the Lord is good. And I hope you have a great week this week. Stand to your feet today. Let me bless you in the name of the Lord. Really appreciate all those tuning in today. God bless you and thanks for that. I'm grateful for it. Well, do me a favor and raise your hands to the heavens and receive this blessing. It's yours as a child of the King. Now, may the Lord bless you and may God keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you, and may he give you peace. Receive that today in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you in the Lord. Go and do good.